all welcome to episode number 15 of the gen ai cio podcast i can't believe we are like what probably fourth month which is uh, things are just moving fast and the news the ai news that too especially with enterprise is still not kind of slowing down so uh, we are coming with some more updates today uh, joining here siva founder of lizer and I'm, i also have rishab with me co-founder of uh, GoML which is a Gene AI consulting company so let's get started we have few good updates for today and interest some interesting ones uh, to begin with Mistral the one the european uh, llm uh, player who took the uh, foundational model world by storm with their uh, open source models uh, they have launched their first closed source model called Mistral Large and it's already performing pretty close to gpt4 they are number 2 currently in the market with respect to performance so uh, when i say performance i'm talking about reasoning capabilities uh, accuracy uh, expected outcomes etc so uh, and the best part is they are 20% cheaper than gpt4 turbo which is the cheapest uh, uh, most capable model from open ai so a fantastic i think good thing for developers because now we don't have to haggle with uh, uh, the open source models or obviously developers who wanted to use mistral they had to go to hugging face or together ai uh, or grok even for that matter but now with mistral launching large directly that's a huge update and and mistral also is not stopping there they also went ahead and launched late chat which is Uh, equivalent to chat gpt where you can go and chat with the model as well so so there are concerns in the market for example hugging face folks came out and said hey uh i mean this is uh, not great because mistral we thought will be open source for a long period uh but i'll i'll probably ha- i have my opinion on that because i mean if someone is investing 100 million dollars and more million dollars into a company why would they would obviously look at uh, uh, earning revenue at some point in time so so yes uh, that's the news on mr large rishab are you using mr large already what's happening not yet shiva but i would definitely want to update our the you know uh, uh, listeners in terms of how they can consume this right now right so i think one is that it's available as part of the chat platform which is available in the beta phase right now which is called la chat obviously going back to the french terminology right uh, and number two there it also supports function calling right for the developers to start including it in their uh, you know code api integration and so on and so forth i think you already mentioned shiva that at least in the initial terms it has performed much better than cloud b2 and uh, you know at yeah. least at par with gpt4 right but but i agree with uh, you know one point shiva is uh, and sorry before i get into that one more update it's actually performed and and you know while probably we've seen most of these llms and uh, you know most of the white papers that at least i have gone through and the experience that we've had with multiple languages is that these you know transform models give better output when you give them uh, you know input in english right so most of the use mm. cases that we built in like we are doing this for european customers swedish customer right we built a translation there on top of gpt4 right uh, before mm. we actually send the data to gpt4 because these transform models tend to perform better when you give it an in english input but mm. with mistral what i've read to shiva while we are yet to try it out that at least in the french and the italian language it's giving almost similar accuracy to what it is giving for the mm. english as well right so so that's a, that's that's definitely a very interesting update because as a multi uh, language model probably mistral would be one of those models which is performing well right even if you don't have a translation layer on top of it right but <clears throat> i totally agree with you shiva is uh, now you know mistral is looking towards while they you know given us really good uh, you know open source model right now they're slowly looking and we have two very additional update i think mistral was all over the news for multiple updates this week right uh, at two next updates also on mistral but now they're actually looking for you know how do they start monetizing some of these platforms right and i think this and the next two announcements that we have around are probably towards in that step right So with that, Shiva, I'm going to move to the next announcement, all right? Which is again with Mistral. So, <clears throat> and this is where you know Microsoft is also now thinking through their strategy when they obviously the first mover advantage with OpenAI because they had the first 
functionally viable first professional uh, you know card saw models available in the market right so they had they made a huge investment in openai which was up to the level of 10 billion dollars right but yeah. now they have invested in mistral as well right and as far as i uh, you know i i read to the, it's it's almost close to a 2 billion dollar investment that they're actually looking to make in mistral but they've already formally announced the partnership right now <clears throat> but what does that mean right for the overall community now See one okay. piece is I think, uh, and this is just my perspective again, Shiva. One is that Microsoft has tied itself well with ChatGPT, right? They made it part as part of their Copilot, uh, right? They are now investing heavily in Copilot. They just released a few very domain-specific Copilots as well, right? Uh, including finance, supply chain, and whatnot. But obviously, as some of these models start coming in, right? And the next step date will actually again is about Mistral, by the way, right? Uh, as these models start coming in. Microsoft has realized that they need to because at the end of the day, right, and this is something that we have conversations day in day out with our partners as well, with our customers as well, right. Well, when they start adopting Azure as a platform, right, they've always seen Azure, uh, you know, equivalent to ChatGPT. If you find using Azure, I will use ChatGPT when it comes to LLMs, right. Whereas when they actually look at an Amazon, right, they see okay, I have these models that I can actually experiment and try on with, right. With these models coming into picture, it's a very good step that Microsoft has taken, right? Because at the end of the day, what we also need to think of is that Azure or probably Microsoft infrastructure is a platform that customers need to consume, right? So more the flexibility that you actually give to your customers, right? It's a better option, right, for the customers as well. Whereas in the Mistral side, and why I probably tied up the first and the second story, Mistral has clearly announced that the investment from Microsoft is going to be more focused towards how do they monetize. And I think Mr. Large is probably one of the first steps that they've actually taken in that step, that, that area. Correct. Right. Yeah. No. Just one correction. Um, the valuation is two billion uh, euros. Oh, okay. While the, while the investment from Microsoft was a minuscule fifteen million dollars only. Looks like oh. it's more of a strategic investment. Just trying to kind of say, say, hey, you know what? I'm I'm going to be there as well. So, and I think that investment might also be primarily Azure credits. Probably not necessarily uh, cash. Uh, anyway, so but but yeah, I mean everyone's looking to get a pie. I mean I think I think eventually all these cloud providers will be like Oracle, right? I mean like how Oracle ended up being with AWS or Azure. So all the LLMs will be available across all these cloud providers. Uh, I won't be surprised if OpenAI comes up with a partnership with Amazon Bedrock at some point in time. Yes. Uh, AWS might be dying to do that actually, to be honest. So uh, if AWS a, manages to do that, then yeah, it's a whole perception change game, right? The moment this announcement yes. came in, Shiva, while I totally agree with you, probably Microsoft might not be putting in like billions or multi billions dollars, or even what they've committed to OpenAI. I think in one of the podcasts you were highlighting, they've not really made those investments. They've exactly. not actually invested in that. But I think it's a whole perception game. Right? The moment this announcement came in, I had partners who were discussing, right? While as I was highlighting Azure. Equivalent to ChatGPT. Now you have mm. Mistral coming in. Now they're very comfortable. Can we discuss deployment on Azure as well? Because now I might have some flexibility in terms of models consumption. So exactly. I think it's a lot of it is perception based, right? And, and that. Break- and on that note, yeah, we'll go ahead. Go to the next one. Yeah, that's I think that's a. Uh... <laughs> that's again Mistral, right? So I think fifty percent of our news is on Mistral today, which is actually a good thing, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, you know. And this is where, you know, I, Shiva, I love working, not because I've been working with Amazon for eight years now, but I love working with Amazon because of the flexibility in the Gen AI space also that they've been given to our customers. So Mistral is now, nice. while earlier, before this announcement, Mistral can still be consumed on AWS, right, as a uh, SageMaker Jumpstart model. They were offering Mistral plus Mistral models, right, on Jumpstart. But now you can actually consume Mistral, Mistral models on Bedrock as well, which is the managed service as we were highlighted in our previous podcast, which is a managed service for running your generative AI workloads and LLMs consumption on AWS, right? Very interesting update. This puts AWS in all together different, you know, competitive landscape. From yeah. any of the major cloud providers, AWS is the only cloud provider that's providing a managed service, consuming, allowing you to consume models from seven different platforms, including Meta including Anthropic. They have their own uh, Titan models that have actually developed, right? 
AI24 labs, which obviously is not that adaptive, but yes, they still provide good models on text summarization. And now Mixtel has joined my platform. So very happy about this announcement because of two reasons, Shiva. One obviously is because it puts Amazon on a different competitive landscape. Number two, a lot of use cases that we are implementing for our customers, we can now provide the managed service platform. Exactly. I mean, see, sorry to say this, but Anthropic Cloud sucks. I mean, big time. <laughs> it is literally un- un- unusable. I mean, yesterday I was trying to uh, trying to access chat gpt gemini and anthropic side by side you know to rewrite a put a kind of a phrase or a paragraph you know what anthropic was not even trying it wasn't even trying it was like i ah, you know what take this if you want to like it like it move on and i mean there was another uh, funny incident i applied to anthropic cloud api access almost a year back and and finally they shared their cloud access api like who needs you guys i mean and and this was really hurting aws big time yes. i mean i'm a big fan of aws you could see here this was really hurting aws very big uh in in a big manner customers were not happy with cloud it, i mean forget about doing computation and stuff it was it wasn't even doing tech stuff really well while it was really good i mean few months back so so mistral uh, that to the mistral model right 8 into 7b version is available so that model which is the closest to gpt in performance now being available on amazon bedrock is a fantastic thing great update uh Again, i think our aws customers are going to be quite happy to be honest absolutely they already are although you know this announcement is like very very new we haven't done any implementations on bedrock or mistral yet but i think again it's your perception right builds a very good perception right but on yeah. that point right you just highlighted see and this is something that we've debated on our podcast right uh, previously as well is Cloud or probably Anthropic focusing on wrong metrics, right? Like I don't really care if the context window is 200k, right? While with Gemini it's a different story altogether, right? Uh, but I don't care if you give me. I, I think Mistral Large, if I'm not wrong, is just for 32k context window model, right? Yeah, but, it is 32. Um, correct, right? I I really don't care if you give me larger context windows because with Cloud V2.1, right, where they've increased that context window. what we have also seen in our use cases and the complaints that i get from my customers the moment they actually need the 30% context window the accuracy doesn't go down the accuracy just like is it's like abysmal right yeah so, so what are those metrics that they need to be focused i think they really need to align their strategy they again like you know they were early entrants right i totally agree but they really need to cope up now right i mean their internal metrics should uh, should really hurt the company I mean, it should be hurting actually because uh uh i mean we at least see that we even within aws ecosystem customers and customers are using uh, cloud anyway i mean i and and i don't think their chat is also good uh, uh, like you mentioned right they were cloud was trying to take the position of safety ethics and yes. all of that uh they they were already kind of moving towards the woke uh, mindset to begin with from day one which doesn't help unfortunately uh, this whole thing anyway i mean but that's a fantastic even... update from bedrock Yeah, but just one last point on that on the safety note that Shiva you just mentioned, right? But that's what even Gemini or Google is trying to do, and what happened with Gemini last week, right? All of us know that they clearly highlighted, you yeah. know, because of their over cautious nature of the model, the way they had actually built yeah. those meta prompts to control, to diversify, and so in fact, one of these you know meta prompts that got leaked have actually identified or mentioned over there. generate results keeping diversity in mind and one of the reasons why you were not yeah, able to get yeah. uh, yeah i think you why you mentioned right uh, it's exactly the same thing like right? the, the reason why they did not want to be in the news is now the reason why they are actually in the news right so yeah see one thing that will have to be kept in mind is and and this is what i was highlighting in our previous podcast as well right? that these platforms or these layers of llms that are being built independently will have to take a bit of bold approach Now building guardrails on top of it, uh, right? Uh, 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 you know, uh, how do you manage control over top of it? Should be a more use case based implementation. Where very specialist Gemini services providers like what GoML or probably Dyser is actually doing at this stage, right? What would be the responsibility there, right? Because if these models become very over cautious, that's what happens with what happened with Gemini, right? So just I just want to highlight that point quickly. No, agree. Now see models LLMs. If you guys are listening to us. please understand at lizer at goml we are working lot closer to clients we are actually deploying projects right we are deploying our sdks to help our customers build agents ai agents 
and and these are all production workloads so please listen to us if you are if you are really i mean concerned about the success in when it comes to customer adoption the reason why gpt4 and mixtral are good when we say good because they work as expected we are able to go to production because the error rate is low the consistency of meeting the expected outcome out of the prompt is actually very high when we deploy rack to it they work really really well when it comes to anthropic and other models they just fall flat so please uh, understand that uh, focus on first production ready llms all your 200k context safety all of that is great for pr but when it comes to actual production stuff it is not good enough actually so so yes that's that goes the message we, we we it's coming from people who are working on your tech almost every day trying to make a difference for our customers right brilliantly put sure cool what do we have next so next is a is, is a something that is causing a stir already i mean there are a lot of questions around hey is ai good is gen ai really good uh, is someone having any uh, advantage uh, by deploying gen ai in their production scenario so klarna came out which is a buy now pay later company like you could using klarna as a service you can buy an e-commerce product or any product for that matter and pay it over a period of time that's what klarna is and they are a massive company already they they're even eyeing a massive ipo now what klarna said was last month they implemented after testing and stuff they implemented their uh, conversational ai agent uh, to provide customer support and it handles 2.3 million conversation a month which is almost like two thirds of their or 70 percentage of the all conversations customer conversations and it is said to match almost 700 full time agents workload klarna was able to save 40 million dollars i mean projected savings of 40 million dollars for the rest of 2024 which will boost their bottom line and uh, and and this is like crazy right this is crazy because uh this is the best example that generative ai needs at this point in time so even for any naysayers or folks who are doubting about hey, is it really going to be helpful look at what klarna did 700 jobs 40 million dollar uh, impact so so yes if anyone is still doubting please don't do get started start building you will i mean klarna did not launch it like overnight they took probably more than a year to perfect it and launch eventually uh, and the other stats are even better right so they were able to bring down the average customer response time from 11 sec 11 minutes to 2 minutes they were able the csat score did not change so which means the customers do not have an issue speaking to an ai because they don't even know that it's an ai in the first place most of them so long story short businesses if you are listening to this reach out to us at lizer we provide you private agent sdks which you can deploy locally and launch your own customer support chatbot in minutes and we partner with goml which is a genai consulting company they could come in and do any other customization that you want on top and make it even more personalized for your business so we are here to help klarna is a fantastic use case and this is what the right ai impact looks like Shiva, what do you think? Absolutely, I think Shiva, this is just a testament to probably you know small steps lead to larger changes, right? And with Gen AI, exactly. what has well, that that's that's a given in tech transformation that that you obviously identify these blocks of changes, you experiment with certain blocks, then you make a bigger block, then you scale it, and then obviously eventually you start looking at business all the way, right? But with Gen AI, what has changed at least in our experience, Shiva, what we spoke to our customers is yeah that the f- experiment uh, probably start small fail fast experiment better model has gone all mm. together to a different level and i'm just speaking from our experience we work with mid size companies we working with certain enterprise companies as well yeah the experimentation that now happens when you compare to a traditional software development right we work with customers where we identify smaller use cases or blocks of use cases and experiment in a week right show them the outcome Correct. decide a go and no go on that use case move to the next use case within 5 days right and even less than that for some matter right so that's right. how the whole world is transformation my only you know feedback to all everyone who probably all all you know everyone who's trying to embrace 
you know, uh, the latest technology, not only Gen AI, but probably the whole foundation model concept, right? Don't wait for the large use case to come. And as Shiva, you mentioned this, what Klarna has done didn't happen overnight or wouldn't have happened overnight, right? Wouldn't have even happened probably in a month's time, right? Yeah. Don't wait to come up with a large use case because the initial investment required to build this use case, both in terms of time and money is not that huge. Think of And you will not find the success as well. Exactly. Yeah, and it'll not work. Yeah. It'll, it's the, I mean, what Jenea has completely changed, I started my statement, Shiva, is you don't have to look for millions of dollars of investments to now look for, you know, at least some kind of change. Right? Start small, fail fast, experiment better. That whole model is now changed completely with Jenea. That's what we're seeing with our customers. Very good update, Shiva. So this is, this reminds me, you know what, Rishav, you made a fantastic point. This is very much akin to how we try to hit gym to lose weight in one day, right? The moment we decide to lose weight, what we do, we go to gym two, three days, ah, ooh, all that, and and then we will be so sore and we'll never go back to gym because we will think it's a bad experience. Exactly. But what actually works is start with diet, start doing some light cardio, start doing some stretching, and slowly ramp up to obviously the day when you will start doing one hour of hardcore iron pumping exercises that you want. And that's what bring results. I mean, what you said is absolutely true. Do not try and start with a large one because you will just remember the way you felt, uh, the way how felt, how bad you felt hitting the gym and doing all this. So that's how you will feel at the end of the whole exercise because you will think all that money, all that effort for nothing because the Gen A output would be very bad. But if you start slowly, start with your customer, start with the website chatbot, start with the simple automation. Start with a simple data analysis engine for internal customers and automate your internal help desk, internal employee help desk. And that is how you should gradually ramp up to your larger and wilder experiments. So fantastic point. Great Absolutely. point. Yes. Who knows? Probably everyone would have this 40 million savings story, but you'll have to get started somewhere. Right? Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> all right. What next? Uh, so we do have an update from Meta as well. Well, they've been a bit away from the news for the, some time. Uh, they are working I'm on waiting. Lama three. And I was just going to. I'm waiting for Lama three, right? Uh, because Lama two. Did you see the so news? There are leaked the news that Lama three is performing better than GPT four already. <laughs> but that's Meta, Meta is leaking. I mean, I mean, on all fairness, Shiva. After what's happening with Google, I think all this hoopla around, uh, you know models performing better than X, Y, Z till the time it's not experimented. It's not, uh, you know, pasted. I, 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 like, I, I do read this news, but I don't believe this news at least. Right. Uh, and that's, that's the same that I asked you was try it out, experiment, and then come up with the right model. Because Shiva, at least in our perspective, the use cases that we are implementing, we've seen Lama to go down a bit. I think yeah. we've honestly, if you really ask me, we haven't been able to consume Lama to in any of our production workloads yet. It's, it's a very good zero. tool for it's exactly. zero actually, yeah. It's it's very good for POCs, etc. Because obviously it's open source, right? Uh, open model, so you know, it's purely open source. But at least we can consume it to a certain extent, right, for our experiments. But nothing in production, right? So I think, but now what they're actually trying to do is they're also trying to experiment in other areas. And I think edge consumption of these models uh, is is the next step, right? But probably these smaller tasks can actually be done on the edge devices right uh shiva so that's what they've done actually they've they've, they've, they've built a research uh like which actually has tried to come up with a newer model for consumption of these models on the edge device which they're actually calling as mobile llm and as part of this research there are two models that they've actually released mobile llm and mobile llms right which is a small mm -hmm. model smaller model but obviously you Got know it. i mean we, we've actually spoken uh you know or we've discussed edge consumption I, uh, gemini uh, you know, has their own model, which is consumed on the pro phones, right? Uh, but I think what they've tried to highlight, well, I've just gone through the paper, a preliminary, we've not tried these models out yet, but they've now introduced a newer concept, which is generally what happens is when you actually look at these models, you actually look at the weights end to end for these models, right? But what yeah. they've developed is a technique where you do a blockwise, uh, you know, weights understanding and adjustment which then moves to the neck block so that your consumption or the memory right. that is underlying memory required is very limited right, for these models. But you still get a good accuracy because, you know, you're adjusting the weights per block, not probably at the model level. Right? So that's what they're trying to. They've explained that this research we're yet to try out these models, but definitely a good update. right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's in the right direction, at least. That's what we could say. 
uh, it's a sub billion dollar model which is sorry it's a sub billion dollar mo- billion. not dollar sorry sub billion <laughs> tokens model i always go to dollar you know why sub billion <laughs> tokens model that's the yeah, entrepreneurial uh, mindset you know sorry <laughs> yeah and, uh, and 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 so so this models are good for chat and api calling which is exactly what you need on your device you don't need reasoning capabilities right you don't want your device to comfort you when you are when you are emotionally unstable you just want the device to have a better nlp better than siri for that matter if if it could be better than siri that's fantastic what what else do you need so uh, so yeah uh, i think they're in the right direction uh, let's see if llama 3 will come out as a pure play open source or will it be um, will it uh, uh, will they take the mistral route by launching a hosted version we'll have to wait and see but i think you know what rishab what mistral did was a master stroke and because while mistral model was available as like other like hugging face and together ai they were providing these models the consumption wasn't there still i mean you and i we are we are seeing right customers are still defaulting to gpt4 they are saying hey if i have to work with an api i'll rather go to the oem the yeah. original provider right which is gpt4 so mistral i think realized it the fact that they are now an oem and launching their own direct api it's a big blow to all these other folks uh which is together ai perplexity api and uh, all the other players who provide these api hugging face also grok for a, they have an edge because the grok is ultra super fast um uh, output so grok is good but all the other models uh, will definitely get ahead because people would want to use mistral directly uh, instead of using together API, together and stuff see i i think one is accuracy i totally agree with you right shiva but i think and and this is something that we propagated in our previous podcast as well as accuracy but consumability of these models when it comes to enterprise use cases or consumption like consumability of the models is very very critical right and again while we do understand cloud hasn't made a lot of slides but shiva we still use cloud in a lot of our use cases at least 40% of our use cases right because it's more consumable right mm, yeah. i can look at some low hanging fruits where there's like nlp normal nlp use cases right cloud performs well so at least since it's better mm. consumable i pick that model up and i probably use it for my customers and use cases right so i think actually a, a right balance and that's where you were rightly mentioned it's master so commercial right a right balance between the accuracy and then the consumability of the model i think that's that's definitely a key yes <clears throat> so the last news for the day we have is from um it's a paper uh written around uh and not just paper they also did some testing as well the concept called one bit llms it's going to be slightly technical but i'm going to still try and hover at a 30000 feet to help everyone probably follow uh and so all of all of us are seeing the way nvidia shares are rocketing skyrocketing right like it went from 33 rupees per share, 33 per share in 2019 to 800 dollars per share like yesterday like 24x increase why because nvidia produces gpus uh and what is the big deal about gpus gpus are good at matrix multiplication matrix multiplication is the core requirement for llms for them to get trained that's what the core mathematical aspect that's happening the operation that's happening in the back end and only gpus can handle that level of matrix multiplication what is matrix multiplication matrix is something all of us would know uh, because we've done our studies i mean we 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 we, we learned it quite young right so matrix multiplication i think but taking one matrix which is actually the weights of the model and multiplying that with the another matrix which is the input that we provide to the model so this is when you multiply these two you get an inference that's the matrix multiplication aspect that's what happens so matrix multiplication can only be done i mean gpus actually perform really well our cpu cpus are the ones that we find in our computers they are not they are not good because you don't have the capability to run so many parallel processing so that's the whole concept of matrix multiplication so what this one bit uh, llm pro, i mean su- suggests is instead of in the matrix multiplication ideally all the individual units are float which is uh, decimal points it has like 0.34578 minus 0. Point something this is float actually 
So because of the float nature, the float, not an integer, the matrix multiplication just blows up and it needs more compute power. What this one bit concept is, hey, you know what? What if we get rid of all the floats and we will just have three types, minus one, zero, plus one, just three integers. And we will have the whole weights and input model just represented in these three integers. It will be either minus one, it will be zero or it's one. That's it. That's a simpler way of explaining how they moved away from float to integer. When they do that, the necessity for multiplication, matrix multiplication goes away and it's only matrix addition. And matrix addition needs lot less compute power. Lot less. When I say lot less, I mean crazy less compute power, which means you can now use your CPUs to run really highly efficient models. You can train the models, you can fine tune the models. So that is the whole revolutionary aspect about this one bit LLM. It was actually a, the first paper was launched last year in October and the second paper was launched like last week or this week actually, which is taking the, the whole, uh, I would say from the model trainer standpoint, it is kind of a crazy thing. Uh, and it's called as bitnet, bitnet 1.8. The reason 1.5, sorry, 1.58, because the introduction of zero, if it's just minus one and plus one, you can call it as one bit, but it's not exactly one bit, it's 1.58 bit because zero introduces the additional 0.58 element. But, but the fact that zero increases the capability of the models to perform better, they went with this proposal, mean, this proposal currently. Let us look at the benchmark, the results actually. The best aspect about this is the latency, the throughput, sorry. The latency is down by, has improved by 2.5x, but more importantly, the throughput is increased by 9x compared to Llama model. Okay. They compared with Llama, benchmark with Llama. And that's what you mentioned in the previous thing, right? Llama is more like a benchmarking and prototyping platform. So they benchmarked Llama. And you know what? The, 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 the throughput per second is about 3000 compared to the best performing mo uh, throughput that we have is Grok which is doing about 500 per second. And this is two, 3000 actually, which is six times better than Grok, almost nine times better than Llama 2 actually on the same with all the other hardware and other stuff constant. So, so what, what one bit LLMs are kind of trying to tell all of us here is this 1.5 bit net is you get better throughput, better latency, much smaller model. So you can run on your uh, CPUs instead of GPUs. And this will actually start making the chip companies rethink their whole strategy on how they should look at uh, doing uh, the chip design as well. Because the moment you take the matrix multiplication out of picture, your chip designs might look very different because you just have to do additions. So that is the, that is why this 1.58 bit aspect is so revolutionary because if this continues to move ahead, uh, in this direction, if more innovation happens in this direction, the idea of there's not even a small SLM, small language model. I'm talking about large language models can also run on smaller, uh, hardware, smaller hardware in the back end. So that's the whole concept about the 1.58 bit, uh, bit net. Current, the last point, it performs really well up to 3.5 billion parameters. So it is still not great for say 7 billion or a hundred billion or a trillion parameters. So it is still hovering in that range, but it's a very interesting concept that has come out and the benchmark results are also quite good. All the, eval some of the evaluation the you could just go and check the paper. It's available in archives. So all, uh, some of the evaluation metrics that they've launched are pretty good as well. So, so that's the 1.58 bitnet news. In fact, I think this could be a very good update. Thanks Shiva, for sharing that. First of all, I think this could be one of the biggest uh, and, and if you know, if this works out well, could be like after the Transformers model be getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, utilized or coming to a professional level, this could be one of the biggest updates after that, because the hesitation that all, most of these companies which are not able to build their models today because they don't have the right infrastructure. Because you like yeah. you mentioned, because they need, need GPUs, which are very costly, which need to be procured and specialized vendors. But with this update, well, I know probably we are still not there where we'll be able to run a, you know, 150 billion parameter uh, model on this. But as we've spoken about in the past, that we'll slowly start moving towards these domain specific LLMs, which will have lesser number of parameters. 
this definitely would be groundbreaking research ever. Like you don't have any constraint. I can run it on my mobile phone, right? Uh, exactly. Uh, or a laptop, right? So, so yeah, definitely brilliant news. I mean, uh, imagine run it on a Raspberry. Exactly. Yeah. You have your outcome right in there, right? I don't have to wait, you know, to go to a, a, a AWS GP instance, deploy it and so on, grab it instance and so on. So on. But brilliant update, sure. Yes. So that brings the end of the, this episode, episode number 15. We will come back with more episodes. You might understand, you might, okay, think about, okay, why didn't they speak about Lama 3? Why didn't they speak about uh, OpenAI trying to launch, uh, uh, I would say, uh, a Bing equivalent or a sorry, Google search equivalent? All the, I mean, we don't want to cover the news just for hype. If it is real hype, we will do that. But otherwise, we will want to wait for the actual news to hit. Uh, I think next week's episode, uh, we will try and cover a lot more. Uh, Elon Musk has just uh, filed a lawsuit against OpenAI, Sam Altman and Greg Brockman. It's making, it's massive. Uh, here, uh, the news is already kind of quite big. So we'll see what happens next week on that. Uh, until then, I mean, take care. Let us know if you have any Gen A use cases. If you guys want to do a POC, reach out to us because like Rishabh, emphasized quite a, I mean, some, sometime earlier, don't start big, start super small, start with the silliest, smallest thing that you can start with. That's the best way to move forward. So reach out to us. We are here to help. Uh, signing off, Siva and Rishabh here. We'll see you next in the next episode. Bye. <clears throat>